Often when you think of the ancient Greeks, one of the first things that comes to mind is the infamous gods and goddesses of Greece. Popular in both history and pop culture, these legendary figures dominate museums, books, and cinemas alike. But what we call myths, they believe to be real and believe to be in control of the way things were manipulated. How did they get to be such an influence? Well, first it started when the titan Cronus swallowed his children out of fear that they would rise up and take the throne away from him. When Zeus was born, his brothers Poseidon and Hades had already been born and swallowed, and his mother, instead of giving Cronus Zeus to swallow, gave him a rock and hid Zeus. When Zeus grew strong, he attacked his father and chopped him to bits, freeing his brothers and threw the remains of his father into the deepest pits of Tartus, which is essentially deeper than the lowest layer of Christian hell. I like to say it wasn't heroic, but who am I kidding anyway? Hades, Zeus, and Poseidon then drew to see which realm, water, sky, and the underworld, they would rule. Hades drew the underworld and ruled over the dead. <sighs> of course I got stuck with the underworld, I mean, I have a babysitter for the undead. Poseidon drew water and became god of the sea. At least now I can hang out at the beach and pick up chicks all day. Which left Zeus with the most powerful of all, the sky. Of course I got the sky. Who else could handle thunder? Hades? Ha! Huh. Now, Zeus was well known for being a massive player, consistently running around and cheating on his poor wife Hera, who happened to be both his sister and the goddess of marriage and family. Now, before you go saying, oh, poor Hera, no, she wasn't a saint either. She just never cheated on her husband. Zeus, however, was said to have fathered many children, gods and demigods alike. Apollo, Artemis, Dionysus, Perseus, and Heracles, those are just some of the more famous of his children that aren't mine. One of his most famous children, however, was a goddess and wasn't caused by cheating, even though Hera was not her mother. Yes, you heard me right. Athena, the patron god of Athens, was said to have been born from Zeus's head. Yeah, that was the worst headache I ever had. Athena may have been one of the most influential goddesses in all of Greece. Being the patron goddess of Athens, she had the most scholarly of all of Greece at her command. It really made sense since she was the goddess of wisdom. My people are the only ones who know how to think. Everyone else, as they were told, my people thought outside the box. Patron city Athens is well known for being the birthplace of democracy and being the home of some of the most well-known temples of ancient Greece. The Parthenon was the biggest temple erected for Athena, and Athenaeums are still built all over the world. Temples, contrary to popular belief and how we use them now, were not used for worship. Instead, they were houses for the god or goddess that it was intended for which is why there is always competition between rivaling city-states to have the biggest and most lavish temple for their patron god or goddess. On the other hand, altars were what the Greeks used for worship. They were built everywhere, in the homes and the fields, in the places of assembly, outside the temples, says Finley in his book. In fact, the only place they weren't allowed to have an altar was in the inside of the temple. At these altars, they said prayers to the gods and made sacrifices. Hestia, though often ignored in stories, was a very important goddess. Being the goddess of hearth and home, cities would often have a central hearth that never went out. Babies would have to be taken completely around the fire before they could be handed to the family when they were born, and the Greeks would burn portions of their dinner as an offering to her. It was nice knowing everyone wanted to please me so much. Everyone loved me! Even wine and pleasure had a specific god. He was a latecomer to Mount Olympus, and is the only Olympian that was immortal. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Dionysus! Dionysus ended up having a cult that would get drunk and parade around naked while tearing to shreds small animals they found along the way. He wasn't the only troublemaker, however. Aphrodite, the goddess of love and beauty, was known in her later myths to be mischievous and treacherous. Vain and proud, she would spite anybody who rivaled her beauty. Medusa wasn't prettier than me. People thought so, though. So I cursed her. Not anybody who admires her over me turns to stone. It is said that Aphrodite herself caused the infamous Trojan War, by tricking Paris into calling her the most beautiful by giving him Helen of Sparta to be his bride. Naturally, another large contributor to the war was Ares, the god of war. Unfortunately, due to the fact that we wanted to live to produce this, Ares could not be reached for comment. Overall, the gods were a massive part of the culture of the ancient Greeks, and while we may not worship them today, they were still a large part of history.